I'm back, I'm Anne. I was preparing um, a video with a couple of books and then I noticed two sim uh, one similarity between two books and it was that they had no, that the, the um, protagonist had no name. And I thought, well, hmm, maybe that's an interesting topic to talk about and why they didn't have a name. So I, will, I would like to uh, talk to you about three books. Uh, two of them written in the same time frame or the same, around the same time and a third one a little bit later. And uh, one is by an uh, Austrian writer, one is by um, an Argentinian writer and the other is um, an English writer, a very well-known English writer. So, the first book that I would like to show you is The Wall by Marlon Haushofer. This book was written in, in 1963, I believe, and the female uh, main character has no name. She wasn't given any name. And in fact, nobody in the book, or the very few people that are in the book, have no name. And I'll, I'll, so the story is about uh, a woman that uh, goes up to the mountains and visits her, I believe it's her niece and, her, uh, and, and the niece's husband. Um, and she wants, to, she wants to visit them, she wants to stay there for a week or so, and uh, she drives up to them. She arrives, the two people are there, and they welcome her, and they say, well, uh, this is your room, you can make yourself comfortable. Meanwhile, we will go to the village and buy some food and some uh, wine, uh, and, and we'll be back soon. So they leave off, and... Uh, uh, the main character makes herself comfortable and um, after a couple of hours the people aren't still back and she starts to worry about a bit but not too much because she knows those people very well. She knows that they uh, are very well loved in the village and uh, they like to socialize and have a, a good time there and uh, so she's tired, she's not hungry so she goes to sleep. And when she wakes up in the, uh, the next morning, nobody is there. And, and she looks around and she sees that the, the, her cousin and her husband hasn't returned, haven't returned. And um, the only thing there is, is a uh, thing, is the dog and, and the cat, and that's it. And uh, she starts to worry and she drives off to the village. And then she noticed that there's an um, invisible wall that crosses the street. And uh, she touches it, and when she looks behind the wall, everything is dead. She sees cows spread it everywhere, lying dead. She sees in the distance a car, with, still with the lights on, but clearly uh, the people in that car are dead. And quickly she realizes that uh, everything behind that wall has vanished, has died off. And uh, she looks to find a hole in the, uh, in the wall, but she can't. And then she realizes that she is, quickly realizes that she is alone in maybe the only one left in the whole wide world. And she looks for, for answers and she looks for, for ways out, but quickly she noticed that it's no use. So then her struggle to survive starts. And luckily there's a cow still alive and she uh, starts to take care of the cow and then uh, but you really feel the claustrophobia of being alone and how she struggles with the fact that she is alone and then she overcomes that and she also realizes that she has, I believe she had a daughter and uh, it has been 10 years since I've read the book. I'll, I'll talk to you about that later. 
and um, yeah, she will never experience the f uh, the fact that she will be a grandmother or 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 uh, see her daughter growing older, having a career or whatever, the normal things in life. And I really, I really, really, really love this book because um, it shows us how resilient people can be without even realizing. She's a very um, average person. She's a middle-aged woman. She has nothing particular about her and that's why it's so powerful, I think. Uh, I think Marlon Halshofer wanted to show us that even plain people without wearing capes and without uh, magical uh, uh, forces or whatever can survive and can thrive under very, very, very difficult circumstances. And, um, and, and she shows us how quickly people adapt to a new situation, to new environments, and it's absolutely breathtaking. I've read this book 10 years ago when I was visiting friends in the mountains, and it made an enormous, enormous impact on me. It was something that I needed to read at that time in my life, and um, it was pff, flabbergasting. I left the book there because when I go back, I want to read it again and see how I've evolved and uh, how I've become my own little survivor in life. That was a bit of the idea. So why is she nameless? Well. It's not important because she's alone. And why are her niece and her nephew, well, her, her, um, the husband of the, the niece unnamed? It isn't important either. There's no one. She's left alone and it emphasizes and it makes it even, the feeling of being alone even stronger because you don't need a name if you, when you're alone. It's just, you, that's it, and that makes it a very, very, very strong book. It's, um, I believe, wait, 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 I've written it down. It's, um, translated by Sean Whiteside, and it came out in English the first time in 1999, so you must be able to find uh, an English copy or if you can read German, read it in German. It's absolutely beautiful, 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 beautiful. It really is. Another book um, that was very powerful to me is uh, a, the, a book called The Promise, not by David Galgut, but by uh, uh, Silvina Ocampo. Silvina Ocampo was more of a, um, a short story writer and a poet and it, this was one of her only uh, novels that she has ever written. This, uh, The Promise, is um, uh, translated by uh, Suzanne Jill Levine and Jessica Powell. And actually it's an unfinished uh, novel but she has worked over 20 years on it, but never really finished it. And it's really important to know why. Um, I will tell you that later. So um, it's about a woman, again, a woman, a female protagonist with no name. The third one is also a woman with no name. Um, it's about a woman who falls into, she's on a liner, a cruise ship, and she falls over the railing and she falls into the water. Nobody realizes that she has fallen off. And during her struggle, she, uh, well, she's fighting uh, not to drown, and during her struggle, she, uh, first of all, promises 
uh, to Saint Rita that when she uh, is uh, when she uh, survives, she will write a, a book about her. Mem uh, she will write a memoir. And uh, but when she is, is, is fighting against the water, when she's swimming and struggling to keep her head above water, she remembers the things that she has uh, done and the people she has met and the encounters that she had. And um, it reminds you, of course, uh, a bit like uh, Elif Shafak's 10 minutes, 30, 38 seconds in a strange world, which is kind of similar. But this one is written a lot earlier, and um, but, uh, you can really feel that the writer is a poet, and uh, she writes the most beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sentences ever. Like, um, in the seawater, I, I have drunk the beauty of the universe. I am looking at a vanishing world, the world that abandons me, that holds me in its arms, and that I cannot restrain. I'm afraid of being lost in this immense ocean. I don't know what to do as not to die, so as not to fall apart, to lose my identity completely and forget everything else. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful! Ah, ah, that's the reason why I love to write, uh, to read so much. But why is this so poignant and why is this so good? It is because, um, and why is it called an unfinished uh, novella? It is because uh, Silvina Ocampo starting to suffer uh, from um, Alzheimer's. So actually the sea, the ocean is a metaphor of her own thoughts and the, and the world she's lived, she lives in and she loses grip, she's drowning in her own brain in a way. And she's drowning in her own memories and for that she can't see those memories anymore. She can't live the way she wanted anymore. And I find that so beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And, and I know there's there are other ways of, I know a lot of people say amazing, but I, I think that that word has lost its power. So it's, it's a, for her, it's a desperate attempt to stay alive, to stay awake, to stay aware of her, of her life and her reason of being. And she has never finished the novel, that's true. And you see that uh, the first two parts of the book are amazingly written and you feel that um, the, the last part is less powerful, less um, poetic. And, uh, but when you realize that, when you have that in your afterthought, in, your, in the back of your mind, it gets even more and more powerful. So, uh, The Promise, Silvina Ocampo, read it, beautiful, oh, amazing, ah, there it is, amazing, awesome, ah, there it is, so yeah, read it. Third book, and I'm 100% sure that a lot of people has, have read this book, maybe even more than once, and never realized that the protagonist didn't have a name. And the book is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Rebecca is, needs no introduction. It's a beautiful book. It's a, there I am again. It's a spellbinding book. It is, um, it has a lot of powerful, Characters in it are like Mrs. Danvers, Mr. De Winter, even the dead Mrs. De Winter, and even um, the house itself is a powerful uh, uh, character, Manderley, even that has a name. But in fact, the main character, the, the, the new wife of Mr. De Winter, has no name. She meant, uh, 
it gets mentioned a couple of times there where she says, I believe, uh, oh, for, uh, she receives a letter and uh, she says, oh, for the first time uh, my, my um, name is spelled correctly. Or uh, there's somebody who says, oh, such a uh, quaint name you have, or such a strange but um, sensual name you have, or something like that. Don't, don't quote me on that. It has been a very long time since I've, I've read this book. But it's a way for Daphne du Maurier to show that um, she really is uh, living in, in the, in the sh shadows of the late Mrs. Danvers and she is nothing like Mrs. Danvers and she's a nobody like when you compare her to Mrs. Danvers. Of course she is, but it was a way for Daphne du Dumouriez to, to make that feeling even stronger. And I find that very powerful. It, it shows her difficulty with being the other woman, being the second, the second woman, the lesser woman, the, the unimportant woman, the, the one that doesn't matter, the one that uh, pff, life doesn't evolve around. And I, f I found that a uh, very powerful, and she did it, um, Daphne du Maurier did it so subtle and so that even when you don't realize that, uh, that uh, the, the main character doesn't have a name or is never mentioned, the name is never mentioned, that makes it even stronger. Voila, that's my... Uh, Little thoughts on uh, nameless um, protagonists. There's, there are, are much more nameless protagonists, but sometimes they are named uh, uh, the nameless one or Mr. X or Mrs. X or Mr. Blue or Mr. Pink or, or um, I believe um, there's another one nameless uh, character, but that's a very short, short story. Uh, the yellow wallpaper, there too, the woman, again a woman, is nameless. And the only man I can think of out of the top of my uh, head is uh, the invisible man. But then again, he was invisible, so he doesn't need a name. Um, yeah, tell me, um, do you know any nameless characters that don't even get... Um, a name like X or uh, the hunter or uh, the, 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 the nameless one or whatever, the nameless boy or just his name or he, his name isn't mentioned at all and not even referred to as a something. Tell me, I would like to hear. Talk to you later. Bye bye.